Right, so where we left it last time, I tested, unit tested, three of these LDA instructions. Um, and that's all we've done. We did have a JSR instruction as well, but I hadn't tested that yet because it wasn't really properly finished, I think. So I think now I'd like to just clean up some of that code uh, and then start adding tests for the rest of these addressing modes for uh, LDA load accumulator. And then once we've got all those tests, we can actually just start implementing it. So the first thing I'd like to do is just clean up this repeated code in the test. Like every single one of these just tests these flags are always the same. So I'm in danger of getting a lot of code in these tests. So I think I'm just doing, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up first to make sure, well, to just minimize the amount of code I've got to write in here. So I think I will just move that out. So I think I'll just move that out into its own little function that we can just keep calling. So this is verify, uh, unified. Uh, I think that's correct. I'm not sure if we can do this like this, but. Uh, Let's see. Uh, we can take a CPU. Um, yeah, so in theory, I can just place that there in place of that. And we'll see if that builds. Uh, what's wrong with that? Function does not take zero arguments. No, it doesn't. It just takes in a CPU and CPU copy. There we go, no problem. So I can just place that in place of these four lines here and just reduce the amount of test code that we've got. Because the one problem with testing is it's not it's not a total walk in the park because this code has to be maintained just like anything else and it has a cost. So that's that done. Let's just see if that still works. Whoops. We need to set that as a style project. And we're still good. Uh, the other thing I really want to do is this execute. Um, I mentioned it in the last video, but this execute function that takes in the number of cycles. So this is how many cycles we want to actually test. I believe when we ac accidentally passed in less cycles than could be executed, you could get stuck in an infinite loop in here. So that's a bit of a problem. And also I was mentioning that this cycles could go negative, but actually it can't because this is an unsigned number. So I think the first thing I want to do is just change that to be a signed number. And this wants to be signed number. And then this fetch byte wants to take in a signed number. So in fact, all these cycles want to be signed numbers. So all these functions that took unsigned are now going to take signed cycles. Right, so let's see if we are still working. So that's all still fine. So nothing's changed there. Um, so, so one of the other tests that I want to write is really an even more basic test than what we've got here. And that is CPU can execute. Uh, CPU does nothing when we execute execute zero cycles. So this test is going to be really easy. Um, there is no data for this, or so let's just do a uh, let's do let's just do this. I'm just naming this so that we get an idea. That's really our data for the test there. So that's our given. Given zero cycles, when we execute that, then um, we actually don't expect anything to happen. Um, we expect we expect this should just exit and do nothing. Uh, expect equal. Um, we just expect zero cycles to to be used. So that's just a super, super basic test that we can call execute with no cycles and we don't go into an infinite loop. And I think we're going to, oh, no. Again, that's absolutely fine. And I was pretty sure that was gonna fail. I mean, I suppose it's cause it gets to here and it just immediately exits with zero cycles. So it's still a good test, but I, again, I, I so many tests I'm writing, I'm thinking, oh, this is gonna fail and it doesn't. The next one we want, I'm going to get rid of a lot of these little inline program comments as well eventually. The next one we really want 
if we don't pass in enough cycles, like this needs to, this program needs two cycles to execute to get to the end of the instruction. But what happens if we only pass one in? So we should be able to pass in only one for that, but we should still expect that two cycles are executed because that's how many this takes. Now we don't care about testing the rest of this stuff in this case. Um, so we're just going to expect that that one actually used two because LDA immediate with this just uses two, two instructions. Um, so what would be the test for this one? CPU can execute, oops, execute more cycles than requested, if required. Oh, that's required by the instruction. <laughs> that's a long test there, isn't it? But that's exactly what it's going to do. We're, we're going to go in there, we want to run a program that takes two cycles, but we're actually going to tell it to actually execute one, but we need it to come back and say, oh, actually, you did both of those. So it did at least one full instruction before it exited. So that's the way we want it to work. Now, I think this might be the one that goes into an infinite loop because it definitely happened in the previous video. Oh, even that one worked. Seriously? Oh, have I maybe fixed, maybe I'd put in some code that fixed all this. Let's just see. So we want to do one. We fetch the byte and then we go out still uh, is minus one it's just because it's being displayed as hex so that's correct now so it's one cycle minus minus one and we get uh, two cycles used so even that works so that's pretty cool so we've got a couple more tests already and we're a bit even more confident that this is working now so um, I think maybe what the test was, was it got to an instruction that was not understood and it went into an infinite loop. Now, if it gets to an instruction that's not understood, uh, the actual real CPU could do various things. It could like have an interrupt. It could actually run some instruction that does something weird. But in our case, whatever it does, we don't want it to go into an infinite loop. So I actually think um, that is something we want to test. Um, so executing a bad instruction does not put us in an infinite loop. And for this one, actually, we just want to put the, we want to put the reset vector with just um, an invalid instruction in it, like this. So an unrecognized instruction, we will just execute one cycle. And there we go. Don't need that number of cycles in this one, do we? So we are going to execute, um, this is an invalid instruction or opcode or whatever you want to call it. I suppose it's an instruction when it's a word and it's an opcode when it's uh, a number, I don't know. Um, and this should go in and it should just execute one cycle, should execute the number of cycles we said maybe. Um, it didn't, but it just gave his instruction not handled. Um, so. Is that really what we want to happen in there? Possibly. I mean, really, we should probably assert in here or something. I don't know what we should do, but we definitely we didn't go into an infinite loop. Again, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the amount of stuff here that's working. Let's execute two cycles in there and just see if that breaks it. Uh, we just got instruction not handled, instruction not handled. <laughs> so that's definitely a thing. Um, yeah. Well, we didn't go into an infinite loop. We're just printing out garbage at the moment. So um, we'd have to see about either getting rid of that later, but at least we're not in an infinite loop there. We definitely got into one before, but this is all working out. So we're a bit even more confident now that we don't go into infinite loops when we get bad instructions, but the CPU does continue to execute. So what we actually want to happen there in the real emulator, I don't actually really know. So the next thing is I'll probably, now this is the part where I'm actually gonna use the testing to drive the development of the next set of instructions. The next one is I wanna do LDA again, but I wanna do absolute addressing mode. And we haven't done absolute addressing mode yet. So this test should definitely fail. I've said this about all the other ones, but this one has to fail. So this one's LDA, load LDA uh, absolute. There we go. So this is LDA absolute. And how does this one work? Instructions using 
absolute addressing contain a full 16-bit address to identify the target location. So the next value is stored as little endian and it's just stored straight after the instruction. Um, and again, that takes four cycles. So if we load from, in theory, that should load from 80, uh, let's say, uh, so remember it's little endian, so it's storing the least significant byte first. So this should load from 4480. So that should be what we expect. So we go in there, we need four cycles for this, absolute. Yeah, um, so let's do, uh, um, execute four cycles, we, to just copy the CPU, um, we expect, oh yeah, because we need to, oh yeah, I've done this, uh, I've done this wrong because, yeah, that's where the other cycle comes in. Whoops, because that's the address where we're going to load the byte from. So let's load our 37 as usual from there. Um, so I, I, you can already see where the four is coming from. One, two, three, four, four cycles. Uh, we expect the cycles used to be um, That's that, and we uh, we've got our thirty-seven value, which is the expecting false and false for those. In fact, we need to do a test to make sure that this will actually set the negative, um, the zero value. We've not done a test for that yet. Uh, I'll do that next. Let's just see if this compiles. Um, LDA absolutely is not a number of this. So let's do let's add that. Where is it? Here's our instructions. This one is AD. Right, so that should be one of our failing tests. Yeah, all these instructions. So it actually went kind of like, it went a bit weird because it didn't recognize the first instruction. So it went for another one and then didn't recognize that and it went for another one and didn't recognize that and it went for another one. And the A register never got loaded because we didn't do it. Uh, and this is actually quite cool because because this is like a machine code program. Normally what you get when you're doing unit tests is you'd call a function, but you haven't written the function yet, so it won't compile. But in this case, it does actually compile because we put a program in memory, but the CPU just doesn't understand it. So we're always calling the same function. So that's actually quite cool. It means I can actually write a load of these tests and actually verify that we can run the test, but it doesn't actually work. So one of the things that I said before, um, I'd like to do this, I'll kind of stick it up here maybe um, after this one. So this would be LDA immediate can load a zero value into the A register. And we will, instead of doing that, we're actually gonna load a zero in and everything should stay the same, CPU A. Let's actually, before we run this one, let's actually just put, um, let's put a weird value into the A register just to make sure that it does actually change. Uh, we expect two cycles to be used. Let's tidy this up a bit. Now this time I want the uh, negative flag to be false and the zero flag to be true. So this one is just, um, yeah, LDA mode can, uh, I'll put, I'll put can, affect the zero flag. And in fact, I don't really care. Uh, I do care about testing that one. Uh, I don't really care about testing these other things in this one. And I, I think this test should work because we've written this one. Yeah, LDA immediate can affect the zero flag. But again, we'd have to really, if we were doing this correctly, we'd have to test this on all of them, I suppose. Uh, we've at least know that that one is working. So we've got one in there. So we're getting better. We're getting closer to like testing this. So let's do some more. LDA absolute. Now this is a weird one because this is one that has a um, an X offset. 
The address to be accessed by an instruction using X register index absolute addressing is computed by taking the 16 bit address from the instruction and added the contents of the X register. So example, X contains 92, then STA uh, 2000 will, st will store the accumulator from 2092. So that all seems fine, but we've got this page boundary. Now it doesn't say here what page boundary we're talking about. Are we talking about if the initial instruction crosses the boundary when you add the X, or is it if the address that you read from where the two bytes cross a boundary, uh, a page boundary, so which one is it? It's not very clear here, because uh, we need to write a test for the number of cycles used for each one of those. Uh, well, let's write, uh, can we write a test where we definitely know that neither of those things is true? because it didn't cross a page boundary on any of those. So LDA absolute X can load a value into the A register. So we've got LDA X. Um, we are taking, well, we use the same address that we used the last time, uh, 4480, and we will, um, we can fudge our X register, CPU X, uh, we'll just add one to it for now, um, and this is at yeah forty four and eighty one. So we want four cycles for that, and this all stays the same. This is the same as the previous test. Um, so in theory, yeah, that one should add onto there. So we've got a test for that now. Um, let's go into here, just need the address, um, BD for that one. Now I figure that later on, because these addressing modes are going to be very similar across a lot of instructions that we probably are going to refactor and um, re, uh, reuse a lot of code that we've done. But the good thing about doing it this way is that at least I've tested all the code and then when I refactor it, I can make sure it still works and then we can keep using it and it, and it should all come out in the wash. But I'm just showing you that this is how I'm building a program that isn't necessarily going to be the finished program, but I'm, I'm working towards getting a finished program. So that's that one. So that, that fails as well because we haven't written that one. LDA absolute X. We want one of these that can go across the page but I need to find out exactly how it goes across the page. I, I'm assuming it means the two, the the little and big byte of the address, go um, actually go across the boundary. Um, but it's again, it's not uh, it's not clear. So I'll have a look at this now. So the the extra, from what I can get, the extra cycle is coming from the fact that the um, the addition of the X register to the address is done as an eight byte value. Um, and then if that happens to have created uh, a value that will cross that boundary, they would have to go and change the high byte as well. And that's what's taking the extra cycle. So I think what it means is the page boundary being crossed means that the, yeah, it basically just means that the addition, if the addition of the X register crosses that makes it cross a page boundary it takes an extra cycle because it's got to go and fix another byte that it didn't have to fix um, in any other circumstance and it's probably doing that because it's got a carry flag or an internal carry flag or something that says oh this has produced a value bigger than 255 so we have to go and add this to the high byte and fix it so I'm going to go with that for this one uh, and this is on some NES thing. I mean, we're not going to write it as like as code like this. Well, I mean, maybe we are. I don't know. It'll be similar to this, but we haven't got to that yet. So all we need to know is how do we make this test so that it would take five cycles? We are going to let's make this quite easy for ourselves. Um, let's make that a one, the low byte, and then that's that's forty four oh one. Well, let's make it oh two to make things nice. So we are loading from 402 and then we'll we'll add fifth, we'll add ff to that. So that's definitely going to cross a page boundary. So that's going to take us to 4501. 
which is right so I think that's our program I think that's the one that's going to take five cycles instead of four um, uh, so this is LDA absolute X can load a value to a register when it crosses a page boundary right this test also doesn't work so from this point I'm gonna to have to assume that oh absolute Y is exactly the same except with the Y so we'll We'll just take these two tests and we'll make them we'll make them Y tests as well. The y and Y. So if I could say maybe we could actually repurpose those tests um, and just change that CPU instruction. But I'll leave that for now. Again, I'm not going to do too much of that. Let's put our Y instruction in B9. Right, we're getting somewhere. We're getting loads more tests that don't work. Oh yeah, look at all these. Fail, fail. Yeah, so that's all the stuff that we haven't written correctly. Right, we're, we're getting more now. So we've got two more left to go and then we've done LDA. Oh my God. At least we think we've done it. Um, this one looks like a doozy. It's got six cycles. Indirect X. Do, that one doesn't, yeah. Oh, this one doesn't take a page boundary because this one's done on the zero page or something. Uh, the vector is chosen by adding the value in the X register to the given zero page. The resulting zero page address is the vector from which the effective address is read. So in the above case, X is four and X is four. So it's calculated as two plus four. So we go to six in the zero page and then we read a whole 16 bit effective address from six in the zero page. So again, I think we should just write this test the way it is. Um, and then we, we're good to go on that one. Let's copy this one again. Uh, and this is LDA indexed X. Is it called indexed X? LDA indirect X. Let's go back to this example. Let's do their example again. In this case, X is loaded with four. So we'll load a four in. Um, so again, that's eight byte and the X register is got, uh, oh sorry, that, that's a two. The X register's got four in it. Uh, and that means that we go from the zero page address at six, because that's two plus four. Uh, is that right? Yeah, and then we read a 16 bit address from there so we're reading from 06 and 07. So in their case, they say well, that's 006 zero, zero, so Little Endian, uh, whoops, 80. And we're expecting, what are we expecting there? We're expecting the, all oh, right, okay. And then we're taking the value, <laughs> we're taking our effective address and then we're loading that into the A register. So then whatever is stored at 8,000 is gonna be the value in the X register. Whoops. Wow, that is a weird addressing mode. And we expect that to take six cycles. Uh, you can see why people don't use this very often. Um, and should take six and it doesn't affect the zero or the other stuff. So we just need an addressing mode for that. Indirect X and that is A1. Cool, so we've got the, uh, is that really right? Let's just check that that's right because it's a weird one this. So we load in two we go indirect X, we load in two into the, we load in two and then we add the X register to it. So that gives us six. Uh, and then the resulting vector is six in the zero page. And if that memory location, so we need two bytes from six and seven, and then the effective address from the vector six would be 
8,000 because we've got 8,000 there. And then we go to 8,000 and we load that into the A register. I think that's right because how else is that going to work? That should put our 37. And we've got another one of these ones with the page boundary crossing. So let's copy. This one is indirect Y. Right, what's this one? The Y register index absolute addressing mode is the same as previous mode, only when the contents of the Y register added to the 16-bit address. So it's just Y instead of X. So indirect Y. Indirect addressing is least most common. Uh, indirect, what, which one is indirect Y here? It's that one. Indexed in indexed indirect. The indexer is the most common indirection mode in 652. The instruction contains the zero page location of a sig the least significant byte of 16 bit address. The Y register dynamically adds this value to generate the actual target address for the operation. Okay, so this is different. Uh, this is different, but it's a bit similar. It's kind of similar to these ones, I think. It's more similar to this one. So RDA indirect y so so it's indirect y so what do we do instruction contains the zero zero page location of the least significant byte of a 16 bit address so this would be we need the y here so this is kind of similar so we're loading the two we add this to get the six and then we get to eight thousand the Y register is dynamically added this value to get the generated actual target address for the operation. Oh, the Y value is added to the uh, the address that we read out. Again, this is like not very clear. Um, maybe this one's more clear. Oh yeah, so this this adds it to yeah this adds it to the address that you've read out. Okay, right. So we get we read from two and three. We're loading indirect Y, and then we add. We add the Y value to the 8,000 that we read, and this gives us 8,004. That should be 37. Huh. Right. That seems more correct. Now, this one is a five cycle version of it, and I think we get a six cycle version of it if it crosses that boundary. So. Indirect Y can load value to the error register when it crosses a page. So this one is the same, except we need a version that can cross the page. Yeah, so the page crossing would be when this value in the Y register causes this value to cross over. So again, I'll do my 8002 plus FF gives me 8,101. So that crossed the page boundary. It needs six cycles for this one. And it should still give us the 37 into that register. Just need to define that. Right, so that looks to me like we've got there we go. So that's all our, so this is proper test driven development now because we've got, oh, look at that. It's all horrible. We've got a bunch of tests that work and we've got a bunch of tests that don't work and we've got to fix these ones without breaking these ones. And that's the real trick, isn't it? But that's good. That's a good start that we've, I never, I never actually thought that this would be work like this. It's quite cool that because it's a processor, it's only got one function, which is execute, and it either works or it doesn't. So we don't keep writing new functions. We just write new code in there. But we've got eight failed tests, and we can probably uh, at least start fixing some of these. So LDA absolute should be quite an easy one, I think. So, so, so LDA absolute. Here we go break this could be where we could refactor some of these functions and start making it more uh, efficient uh, we need to fetch what's LDA absolute uh, full 16-bit address 
So um, this might be where we need a new function. Have we got a fetch word? So this wants to read a word for uh, absolute address is fetch word. Whoops, fetch word. Taking the cycles and the memory. Cool, so there's our, actu there's our actual address. So we want to take the value that's stored there uh, so we want to read a byte now. Read a byte from cycles at the. Oh, we want to. Oh, that's weird. Why is the address a byte? Oh, uh? so we want to read out of memory. Um, we want to read one byte from a 16-bit address. Why? Why have we got that? Um. <clears throat> Oh yeah, so this just reads one byte from a byte address. That seems wrong. That should be, shouldn't that be a word? Is it because we've only read from the zero page? Yeah, it's because we've only read from the zero page previously. So actually we want to, maybe we want to do, maybe we should do that. So that's got read byte from zero page. And we want to read byte. And this one will take a word in as the address. That seems that seems fine, I suppose. Right. So this is read by from an absolute address. And it needs the memory. So already like the program before was like we didn't quite have what we wanted to do that. So that should load into the A register. Uh, is that all we've got to do? Um, but these other read bytes are now coming from using the 16-bit value. I suppose that's getting promoted to a 16-bit value, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, we can get rid of this one then. We can just get rid of that because if we read from the zero page, it's just the same. It'll just get promoted to a word. And again, we've got the test for this already, so we know that that's going to work. So already we've been using this and we've kind of finding a problem for it, but at least we can know that we haven't broken anything when we get through this. So the absolute addressing one looks like that passed. There you go. Absolute X can load a value. Um, it was just absolute. LDA absolute can load a value into the register. LDA absolute X can load a value. Oh, that one has definitely failed. Right, okay. So that's the next one. And this is the one with the weird page boundary. So let's let's see if we can handle that one. That was quite an easy one then. So um, LDA absolute X. Now, if we just put this in like this, this should still fail because it didn't read enough. It didn't fetch enough bytes. Um, LDA absolute X can load when it crosses the page. Yes, yeah, so that's still a failure because uh, we've got to. Oh yeah, that's a point. Yeah, we've got to add the. We've got to add the X register to that. Uh, is that right? Is that what this one does? Oh no, it adds it to the, it adds it to the absolute address. Now I assume that's where another one of our clock cycles comes in. I think that's a cycle there. And then we read the byte from there. So we read the wrong byte. That's the first thing. I'm going to get that right. Uh, that's like low value. It ran. Expect to the quality of these values, which is zero. A is zero. Are the average to zero? So I'm expecting that it should have read the correct byte, but it. Um, but we read the wrong number. Oh, expected cycles is wrong, but also the value's wrong as well. Am I doing this correct? Incorrect. Uh, the address to be accessed by the instruction X register. Taking the 16-bit address from the instruction, adding the contents of the X register. So yeah, so we get the the address, we add the X register, and then we read the byte from there. And that is our new A register. So why is that not correct? Um, 
I'm expecting it to read from 4480. Oh, it's supposed to be four. We got the test wrong here. So it's supposed to be 4481 because we added the X register onto it. That's why it was wrong. So again, maybe that's uh, the absolute Y, absolute X, absolute Y. This one's wrong as well. Let's see where we're up to. Oh, don't need this anymore. So I'm expecting um, failed. LDA absolute X can load a value into the X Richard. Why is that? But the one that crossed the page boundary was correct. What? What is happening here? Have I correct? Have I done the wrong test? Cycles used is five, and it should have been four. Whoa! What have I done? Oh, is there no cycle taken for that? Right. Okay. Um, so we don't take a cycle for this because we took one for the instruction, two to fetch the word. That's three. And then another one to read the byte, that's four. So it's just four. Okay. This in theory is correct. But the crossing page boundary one shouldn't be. Oh, look at that. But apparently that's passing. LDA absolute X can load a value into the A register when it crosses a page boundary. That's not right. Oh, it, why is it doing that? This one is apparently executing five cycles and this one's executing four. Let's just have a look at that. Four. Five. What? Why? Why have you executed five? What have I done? Oh, is it because... Oh, I know what's happening here. So because I've not written it correctly, it's still come out with five cycles. Um, but those five cycles were not... This is, this is not a very good test at the end of the day. Because what it did is it went round and it did an invalid... It did an invalid instruction in there somewhere. So I think... What I'm going to do now is I'm not going to do this printf here. I'm going to, I'm just going to throw in it. Can I do that? Can I throw, just throw an error there? I really want this to not work. Yeah, I don't, I really think this shouldn't work if it, uh, this is unreachable code. Oh, because break is unreachable. Oh, that's unreachable. Let's put it there. So I don't want these invalid instructions anymore to just be warnings. I want them to actually... Um, there we go. Instruction not handled and we get... So now we've got an error where we wanted an error. So when it crossed the page boundary, it shouldn't have ever gone into that code. So that's much better. So we've got a better test already. Oh, except executing a bad instruction does not put us in an infinite loop. That one fails now. Um, I don't know if there's a way but we can't go into an infinite loop with that anymore anyway. So this is an invalid test now because uh, invalid instructions will just crash the program. So I'm getting rid of that one. Yeah, look at that. So as soon as we get an invalid instruction, this test starts to fail. Excellent. Uh, instruction zero, instruction 185. Cool, right, that's better. That's what I expected. That was confusing. So now we've got the problem of, we've got LDA absolute X. Yeah, the problem we've got is if this has, if this crosses a page boundary, we need to add a cycle or reduce a cycle in this case. <clears throat> Let's just make that so that there's a copy of that. Um, and I think in this case, if the absolute address x minus the 
absolute address. What would this actually be? Is this one way of doing it? What's the best way of doing this? If the absolute address minus that is less than or equal to 255, then it was greater than 255, then we've crossed the page boundary. Um, so we still got an instruction not handled in there. Why did we get that? Because we didn't do this right. It's that one, it's this next one, I think. So what is this value? Oh, it's exactly FF. So that should have crossed a page boundary. Yes, it does. It must have crossed a page boundary if it did that. So I think this is it now. Again, I might be getting this wrong, but let's just see. Yeah, so I think that's it. So we maybe want to write some more tests for that one because that one's a bit weird. And maybe I've not done this correctly, but going to roll with it for now. What's the next one we haven't done? In fact, I should have just looked at that screen while I was on it. Oh, is it just the Y version of the same thing? Yep, it's the Y version of the same function. So in theory, I can just um, uh, I can just paste that and do the Y version, which is exactly the same, except it puts it in the Y register in the uh, uses the Y register. That's Y. That is Y. And that's all the same. Uh, yep. Except we've got a problem. LDA, LDA absolute Y can load a value into the A register. Why is that one not working? Oh, and the crossing the page boundary didn't work either. What was wrong with you? Is this one different? No, it's not different. Absolute Y. Where are you? Um, 44080, 44, Yeah. Is this one wrong? Four cycles, four cycles. A register has zero in it. What? What did I do wrong? Fetch the absolute address. Why is the Y register zero? Wait a minute, what, what's gone wrong here? Because I'm using the X register. Oops, that's a mistake. I've done that in the other one as well. Yeah, that was a mistake. Let's try that again. Right, those two are working. Now, in uh, fact, what have we got left? Indirect X and indirect Y. Indirect X is the weirdo one. At least it doesn't have the weird page boundary crossing nonsense. So let's do that one. And that's indexed. Oh, these are weird, I've these weird names. Ind X, is that the right one? Yep. Right, it's this bit here here. Index and right these can zero. So the address of the table is taken from the instruction in the X register. Indexed indirect. Not indexed indirect, not indirect index. So the first thing we've got to do is fetch a byte. So that gives us a zero page address. So it adds the X register to that. We add the X register to that zero page address. So we're going to six, zero page memory. And then we read a 16 bit address from that address. Whew. So now we fetch a word from there. Oh no, we don't fetch a word, we want to read a word. 
is there a bit where we were reading a word? Yeah, we were getting that's actually we were actually getting those. The fetch were correct. We were getting those from the program, but this one is different. We're just reading this from a zero page address. So we just want to read a word, and that is the effective address. Um, and then we want to take the value from the effective address which is a byte and there we go and that goes into the A register phew so we don't have a read word we have read byte but we don't have read word and read word is going to be very similar to read byte Uh, it's going to still going to return a byte. Sorry, I, I'm confusing myself again. We are still reading a byte. It's we're reading it from a word address. So it's still read byte. Um, oh no, it is read word. Sorry, God, no, I'm even confused now. So this is read word. So this does have to read. Yeah, I do need a read word. So read byte is going to read one byte from a 16-bit address. Read word is going to read 16 a 16 bit value from a 16 bit address and we can do that with two read bytes um, so remember it's little endian so this is the low byte and this is the high byte Um, phew, right, I think that's read word. Yeah, super confused myself then because I was like, why am I writing a read word? Because it already took in a word. And the answer is it returns a word. So I think that I'll pass without indirecting, but it won't have the extra problem that what happens if it crosses the page boundary. Um, so what did we get? So absolute wire can load when it crosses the page boundary. That also worked. That doesn't seem right. Why would that one have passed? Again, I feel like something's gone wrong here. Um, let's just put breakpoints on these. This one is expecting four cycles and it used four cycles. And the next one, we're expecting five. And we used five. How has this happened? This is the one I was expecting to use four. How did we get to five? Oh, wait a minute, I'm doing the wrong one. Doing the wrong one. Let me run this again, I'm confusing myself here. Indirect X and indirect, so indirect Y is the one we haven't done yet. Oops, it's this. Yeah, indirect Y hasn't been done, it's indirect X is the one I was doing. God, oh, mate, I'm getting confused with all these names. Indexed, indirect, and and direct. Indexed, indirect, and indirect, indexed. It's like crazy. LDA, indirect x can load a value into the A register. Let's just find that function and let's, let's just find out what's wrong with you. Right. You are not working. Why are you not working? Because you ran an invalid instruction and it caught it because this one runs six cycles apparently. Oh, I think we didn't use enough cycles. That's the problem here. This is the six cycle one. Is that definitely A1? Well, let's go in and have a look. A1, there it is. So we need six cycles. That's what's going on. This one's crashing because it's not using enough cycles. 
we fetch the by indirect x. So this one uses cycle to fetch a byte. Okay. Um, and then it adds the x value to that. Oops. So that's one, two. There's a read for three, four in here, and then five. Uh, I think this is going to consume a cycle as well. I think that's where we're at. Yep. Yep. And yep. Well, I was super confused there for a second. Right. Indirect Y is the last one. It's the last one. And we're going to have an LDA, working LDA instruction. Oh my God. So, indirect Y. Okay. This is the one. Um, let's just go in and write it. Oh, it's going to be one of these weird ones like this one. Is it? Oh no, it's very much like the zero. Oh, let's just write this one from scratch because it's just different again. It's the same as something else, but I don't know which one it is. <laughs> uh, indirect Y. That is B1. Hopefully we get this right. Y is loaded for the vector is given as the zero page thing. So we want to fetch a byte from the zero page. And then that contains the address that we want to read a word from. That's the effective address. And then we add the Y value to the effective address. And then we read the byte from, we read the byte from there. And we stick that in the A register. So that's uh, what we're missing there. We didn't give it the memory. Sorry, you need the memory if you want to read from it. Okay, right. I expect that that one works, but it's not handling this thing where we actually cross a page boundary. So we should have one broken test and we've got one broken test. Cool, so it's really just a case of this. Um, If we cross the page boundary, we consume another cycle. Oh my God, there we go. So, in theory, whew, that was a bit of a chore, wasn't it? In theory, we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, I can't count now, six, seven, eight working instructions. Probably, I mean, if these tests are good enough for what we've got, uh, if not, we've messed up somewhere because I could have written these tests wrong or I could have written the code wrong. Something could be happening there. But we're using the test to drive the development of the instructions. So I think that's pretty good. Now, the next thing that we'll do in the next video is if you notice that LDX and LDY are very, very similar. LDX has got a lot less addressing modes and so is LDY. But I imagine that, yeah, once you've got, yeah, these appear to be like so similar to the LDAs that we could probably repurpose a lot of the code. So to get this next lot of LDX and LDY instructions working, which would be another, what have we got? Another 10 instructions, which takes to 18. Um, then we could repurpose a lot of the code and try and not rewrite everything. Uh, maybe even repurpose some of these tests because a lot of these tests will just be the same. There'll be a different instruction and they would be, other than that, they would work exactly the same. Or they'd have to test a different register down here. So it'd be this and this, but apart from that, a lot of these tests would work the same. So that would be the next video, I think, is to try and repurpose these tests to get LDA, LDX and LDY working. And then we've got a lot more. So that was a bit of a chore, but um that is programming sometimes it's a bit of a chore um but i'm getting a bit further towards a more working 
CPU, I suppose, or virtual CPU.